everybody! After receiving so much love and support on my mini sourdough bread bowl video, I decided to do a part two and make mini sourdough batard loaves. Watch this video to see how. To start, you'll first feed your sourdough starter. Into a clean jar, add 50 grams of sourdough starter, 100 grams of water, and 100 grams of bread flour. Mix these together and allow your starter to rise on the counter for the next six to eight hours. You want it to be at least doubled in size and nice and bubbly. You can do this the night before if you plan to make your dough the next morning, or you can do it earlier in the morning if you plan to make your dough later in the afternoon. I fed my starter around 9 in the morning and was ready to make my dough around 3 that afternoon. Once your starter is ready, it's time to move on and make the dough. To a large mixing bowl, add 200 grams of sourdough starter, then add anywhere between 700 and 800 grams of water. In this video, I added 800 grams of water to the recipe. If you're new to sourdough baking, I recommend using 700 or 750 grams of water. The more water that you put into the dough, the more sticky and difficult it will be to handle, but it will result in a more open crumb. Next, mix together your sourdough starter and water to get the sourdough starter broken up and more evenly distributed throughout your water. Then add 22 grams of salt and 1000 grams of bread flour. Then, using a Danish dough hook like I'm showing here, a silicone spatula, a spoon, or even your hands, mix together all of the flour into your wet ingredients. It will take a couple minutes, but make sure that there are no more dry bits. Then take a damp towel, cover your bowl, and let your dough rest on the counter for one hour. Now we're gonna start a series of stretch and folds to build gluten strength in the dough. To stretch and fold the dough, reach your hands into the dough on one side, pull the dough up, fold it over itself, then spin the bowl 90 degrees, and repeat on the next side. You'll do this on all four sides of your dough. Then cover your dough with a damp towel and rest for 30 minutes. You're going to complete a total of four rounds of stretch and folds, each spaced 30 minutes apart. With each round of stretch and folds, you'll notice your dough becoming smoother and stronger. If the dough is sticking to your hands, try wetting your hands before each round of stretch and folds. For my third and fourth round of stretch and folds, I like to do coil folds. Reach your hands in on opposite sides of the dough, pull the dough up and tuck the ends of the dough under itself to form the dough basically into a coil. Then spin the bowl 90 degrees and repeat the same thing on the other side. Spin the bowl 90 degrees a couple of times until the dough really doesn't want to tuck under itself anymore. By the fourth stretch and fold, you can see that the dough has started to develop some really nice fermentation bubbles. Coil fold the dough just like I showed you during the third round of stretch and folds. After your last round of stretch and folds, allow your dough to rest on the counter for about one additional hour. You want to rest until you notice that the dough is nice and light and airy and has lots of fermentation bubbles on top, like you see in the examples I'm showing you here. Once your dough has reached optimal fermentation, flip your bowl over and allow the dough to naturally release from the bowl onto the counter. With wet hands and a wet bench scraper, split your dough into five equal pieces, about 400 grams each. Don't worry if your pieces aren't 400 grams on your first try. You can take away or add small pieces of dough to each piece as needed. Once you have your five pieces of dough portioned out, take each piece individually and fold the outer edges of the dough in towards the center. If your dough is sticking, you can use your bench scraper to help separate it from the counter. Once you have the edges folded in towards the center, flip the dough over so that the seam is down on the counter, and then use your hands and bench scraper, or just your hands, to form each of the dough pieces into a tight ball. To do this, push the dough up and away from you, and then around and back towards you. Do this over and over. 
This organizes the gluten strands around the edges of the dough and forms a nice, tight outer layer. Once you've done this with all five pieces of dough, cover them with a damp towel and let them rest on the counter for 30 minutes. The next step is to give the dough its final shaping. To shape the dough, use your bench scraper and take one piece of dough and flip it over onto the counter so that the smooth side is down. Then fold the bottom of the dough up about halfway, then fold the sides of the dough in towards the center, crossing them over each other slightly. Then you'll fold the top of the dough down just slightly, then stitch the sides of the dough together all the way down the length of the dough, folding each side in towards the center and crossing over each other slightly. Pop any bubbles you see that are larger than the size of a nickel. Then gently roll the dough up into a log shape from the bottom up. Then you're going to pinch the sides of the dough together to seal them. Then pick up your dough and place it seam side up into a banneton that's been sprinkled with white or brown rice flour. Repeat this with each of your dough pieces, then allow them to rest on the counter for 5 minutes. Stitch the ends and sides of the dough together towards the middle one more time to give the dough even more tension. This will help the dough spring up in the oven when we bake it and make scoring the dough a little bit easier. Then, sprinkle the top of the dough with rice flour, cover with a plastic bowl cover or place in a Ziploc bag, and refrigerate overnight. The next morning, place a Dutch oven into your oven and preheat to 450 degrees for one full hour. This will ensure that your Dutch oven is piping hot in order to get the best rise on the dough. After heating up the oven, I take two loaves of dough from the fridge at a time to score and bake. Gently flip your dough out of its banneton onto a piece of parchment paper. Then brush off any excess flour or apply more white rice flour if you like the look of flour on the outside of your loaf. Use a razor blade to score any decorative designs into your dough. I like to use this circular bread lom to cut my designs. I find it gives me the most control and is much easier than holding the razor blade on its own. After your decorative scoring, score one deep expansion score into the dough. This is technically the only score that you need to do. I love scoring intricate designs into my dough. I find lots of inspiration on the internet, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. There are tons of talented bread artists out there, so take a look and have fun experimenting. Not all of my scoring designs come out great, but I always learn something and continue to get better each time I try. Once you have your loaves scored, place them into your Dutch oven on their parchment paper. I like to add a couple of ice cubes right before shutting the lid of my Dutch oven just to help create a steamy environment so the bread can rise as much as possible. Place the Dutch oven into your oven and bake at 450 degrees for 20 minutes. Then remove the lid and bake for an additional 10 to 20 minutes until the loaves are nice and golden brown. Take the loaves out of the oven and allow them to cool on a wire rack. Repeat this process with the rest of your loaves. If your oven is big enough and you have enough Dutch ovens, you can bake more than two loaves at once. And now for a look at the final product. Let's cut it open and take a look at the crumb inside. These loaves are the perfect size for one to two people. I always make extra so that I can have fresh bread whenever I want it. Just place your extra loaves into a Ziploc bag and freeze. Then, when you're ready for fresh bread, take your frozen bread out of the freezer, wrap each loaf in tin foil, and place in your oven at 200 degrees for about 45 minutes to thaw your loaf. Once the loaf is thaw, take it out of the tin foil and bake it at 350 degrees to crisp it up. It will be just as great as the first day you made it. This loaf had been in the freezer for two weeks. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below if you have any questions. There will be lots of links and information in the description box.